Right, so uh, I've opened up the Bifrost Graph, uh, Windows Bifrost Graph Editor, and um, I need to sort of convert this guy into a volume so I can bring it into the field system, which is the map. Um, one of the things I should mention is um, I got pretty much most of the information I needed for to do this from this video here, um, uh, which is what's new in next chapter in Biofrost. It's a good Jonah Friedman does a good presentation on fields, and pretty much what I'm doing is based on this. Um, and then the transferring of the geometry to another geometry, or well, the particles to another geometry. Um, I used this exploring Bifrost with Paul Smith, episode 15, mixing references together. I think it's this one. Just double check I've got the right one. Hello. Um, yeah. Do you want me to just push you? And they're both, well, actually, this one's on the Maya Learning channel. There's a whole load of these. I highly recommend them. Paul Smith, when he's an, an ICE user, he starts working his way through working out how Bifrost works. And there's some good stuff in there. Um, so, first thing I need to do is convert this to a volume so I'm gonna drag him into my graph I've got any outputs I've deleted them um, and I need to convert him to a volume so if I go tab convert to volume and attach the mesh to the geometry convert to mesh I don't want the fog density I need to store a level set which will be what we'll read into the field um, and just make an output so we get that um, I've just noticed that if you turn on the uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing level sets seem to disappear so uh, if you've got that on and you can't see anything it might be that um, it took me a while to realize that I kept thinking there was some sort of bug but it seems it's that so, as you can see, it's a bit low res, not very tight to the mesh. Um, that's because the resolution mode set to automatic. You want to set that to absolute, and then it will fit the mesh a lot better. I can hide that original mesh now. So, that's him converted to a volume. Um, and I'll put on some adaptivity as well, because it will just um, optimize that a bit. So, I've done that. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to scatter some points over my alien horror thing because I want to emit from the points that are more evenly spread. So, I'm going to use a scatter node or scatter points node like that. And I'm just going to plug in the mesh to that one. I'm going to set my scatter mode to blue noise maximal. Actually, let's have a look at the differences. I'm just going to plug that in. So let me unplug that so we can just see it. Is it going to hide that? There we go. So that's our points. Um, I'm going to put those up to say 2000. There we go. Um, so at the moment they're random, just over the surface, as you can see there. Um, I'm going to change this to blue noise maximal, which is a the slowest of all the computational ones, but you can see you get a really nice even spread of them over, and then I can just crank that up a bit more if I want to 5,000. You know, just get a nice even spread of them all over the surface. Or you can do blue noise, which is a little bit more noisy, maybe not as not as massively defined as evenly spread as this one. Um, does take longer to sort of calculate. So let's just plug that in. And I also want to just plug, take the mesh and plug that out into the output. The reason being is I'm not going to do any more anything else in this graph. Um, when you convert a mesh to a volume, um, it does slow up the simulations or just using the graph in general because it's calculating this volume at every frame um, and every time you do a change. But if you only need to do it once, which I do here, just on a static mesh, I can do it in this graph and then make a new graph, which I'm going to do now. 
like that, and then drag in the first graph. And now because this has gone out into Maya and then back into another graph, Maya's caching system takes over here, so it doesn't cache this mesh or this volume unless you go back into uh, the first one and do a change. So it just speeds up everything if you do that. Right, so in here I've got my volume, my points and my mesh. Um, and let's start making the field system. Actually, I'll do that in another video. I'm going to stop the video here. So that's converting to a volume. <laughs> 